Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to Exotic Wine Travel, guys. I'm Matthew Horky. I'm Shireen Tan. Welcome back to this chat. We're here with, uh, we're not even ashamed to say this, what our favorite producer, our favorite winery in Armenia. Uh, and that's actually where we got our wine career started. So Not just Armenia, one of our favorites in the world. <laughs> yeah, I would say so. Def I would definitely say that. So uh, we are here with the founders, the owners of Zora Winery. So uh, we have Zorik and Yedez Garibian. Do I pronounce that right, last name? Yeah, fantastic. <laughs> well, thanks for being on. It's good to see you. It's good been a couple you. years. How are you doing? Tell me what's up. Everything fine. We are just having fun at home. <laughs> just going on live. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I have to tell, before we get started, I have to tell the audience a funny story about when we met oh my gosh, the first time. Funny. We were planning to write a book on a, about Armenian wines, and I emailed Zora so many times, and, and, and whoever, maybe it was you or some, but one of your staff was saying, you know, we don't accept visitors, sorry. Mm -hmm. And we ended up staying at the same guest house. Yeah. Yes, and Shireen, Shireen <laughs> hit me, and, and Zora, you were working out, you came from your morning run, and Shireen kept hitting me with her elbow, and she said, you know, that's the owner of Zora, you should say something to him. <laughs> so, so I really wanted to taste your wine. I went online. I searched for all the articles and pictures I could find. And the moment I saw you, I knew that was you because I saw your pictures online. And I was like, does he speak English? And she was like, yes, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. I know he speaks English. Well, <laughs> Shireen, right. Shireen, was, Shireen was always uh, in, in her old career, in her, in her corporate career, she was always having to chase down people. So she knew how to look people. <laughs> I'm a professional stalker. So that's what we went to your winery. So can you tell us a little bit about uh, the start of Zora? You know, you know, where's, where is Armenia? A lot of people don't know the start of Zora, your story. Yeah, first of all, sorry, eh? I didn't know you, but we, we are still close to public, so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Zora. Zora is a fantastic adventure uh, that has started in the uh, beginning of 2000. That's the date when uh, Zora project was conceived uh, and we decided to enter in this project. Uh, this is beginning of 2000. Just to uh, just to put this on context, back then uh, in Armenia, Armenia was just got the independence since few years, and uh, nobody was giving credit to our uh, native writings, mm -hmm. and uh, all the investments basically they were uh, oriented toward uh, brandy making. So all the investments coming outside or inside Armenia, they were uh, directed towards brandy. Mm -hmm. Zora project, I can say proudly, at that time, uh, uh, actually is the first winery that has believed that in Armenia, you can make high quality with in international credential quality wines out of Armenia. Mm -hmm. And to do that, uh, we have chosen natural choices uh, with our native varieties. As you know, we've got hundreds and hundreds of them. And to get the game even more uh, difficult, we opted from the beginning to age our wine in our traditional, with our traditional aging technology, which is inside the amphoras, which we call them garasas. Mm -hmm. uh, um, just to say that at that time in 2000, Nobody was talking about native varieties in the world and nobody was talking about amphora wines. I mean, this yeah. is way before, so people were just very looking at us very strangely. Mm -hmm. saying, I mean, yeah. I mean Grav uh, Gravner didn't come out with their amphora um, until, yeah, mid 2000s, yeah. I think. Yeah. It, or, or maybe it was late 90s, but yeah, you were right there on the forefront. <laughs> Yeah, we, we started, uh, obviously, as you know, Wyotzor, our region, doesn't have the phylloxera. Mm -hmm. And uh, we didn't have any idea of uh, what, was going, what was going to be the outcome. We opted to start with RNA grape. Uh, RNA is, in my opinion, uh, is the king of Armenian red grape varieties, native varieties. Uh, and because it has been in our uh, area since millennia, 
I don't know if you know, uh, okay, you know about the oldest winery in the world, RNE1K, which is just in front of Zora. Yeah. Zora's Winery and Vineyard. Where you started, that, that little it's right in front of us. <laughs> exactly. Uh, inside there, apart from the discovery of the amphoras, which dates back to 6,100 years, they have found around, the, uh, around that uh, amphoras also pits and stems, which are from the same period, and analysis done as a DNA brings it to the RNA of today's RNA that are planted in Vyotso. Wow, that's really cool. They just <laughs> gave me a shiver. <laughs> I can't believe, I, I remember you, you started early, but your first vintage wasn't until 2010, right? 10 vintage and 12 in the market. Wow, so you really, I mean, you did your, did your homework. You were <laughs> moving about slowly with patience, right? Uh, yeah, also because we couldn't uh, fast forward anything uh, mm -hmm. because the knowledge was near to zero when we started. We didn't have any neighbors to look, to understand what to do, how to do. And because it was ungrafted, even today, uh, everything in Biotur is ungrafted. So, uh, and because RNA has been in the area since millennia, so it has different shades, different strains. Mm -hmm. So for so many, nearly 10 years in the vineyards, we have done intensive field selection, massal selection, and created a collection of these strains that in Zora's idea, they are the good potential, the best potential out of RNA as a grape. Mm. And I have called it, I have to say it here, and I've called this collection, these years of work, I've called it RNA Noir. Mm -hmm. RNA Noir was coined by Zora. Mm -hmm. RNA Noir didn't exist in Armenia, as a word is invented by Zora's project. And I am very happy that now my colleagues in Armenia also, they are using to yeah, identify what? their grape variety. They use RNA, which doesn't bother me. I'm more than happy mm -hmm. to have, to have <laughs> contributed. <laughs> mm -hmm. So yeah, uh, so after 10 years is our first wine, as you say, Zora Karasi is the wine that we came out. Uh, 10 harvests, 12 uh, in the market. And for, for those, uh, and anybody, if anybody has questions, jump in in the comment section, we'll answer them. Uh, for people that don't kind of, kind of new to Armenian wine, uh, Zora is in Vyats de Zora. This is an incredible wine region, high plateau. We're talking 1,000 to 1,600 meters. It looks, uh, it looks like a high desert, basically. You see a lot of rock and ice and then greens from the vines, old vines, vineyards that are hidden all over the place. And what you're, what you're working with is a Rennie for red, Rennie Noir for white. It's Vosquiat, Garandamac, and now Chila, right? Is that correct? Yeah. No, so just four varieties. Sorry? Just four varieties. Just four grapes currently. Uh, okay, since the beginning, we every year we do experiments because mm -hmm. we've got so many of uh, different varieties in Vyotzor mm -hmm. uh, that even to us, they are unknown. So we do experiment, we leave it there, we go back next year, we take them back. Uh, I don't want to push any I don't want to fast forward anything. Uh, Zora as a philosophy is uh, any wine comes out from Zora's project has to be more than 100%. 100% is not enough for us. We are after 120%. Mm. So that's why after 20 years of work, I've got only three wines and the fourth one is coming out. But, well, uh, for, for example, sorry for the wife when we were doing Boski. Uh, we had about eight varieties which we, we, we started experimenting with. Oh. These varieties was, for example, Chilar, which we decided that we were going to put it in Heritage as other varieties too. So, so it's not only these four. There's a lot of varieties we're still working with, reds. Um, and we only work, we've decided we're only going to work with um, non-hybrid uh, varieties. Okay. Right. Yeah, of course, because there's plenty in, in Armenia. Do you work with an institution in your clonal selection and identification of the varieties? Uh, no. Uh, what we do is very basic. Mm -hmm. it, before harvest, we look at the fruit, we look at the plant, we like it, we make a nut, 
<laughs> we come back here in springtime, cut it. <laughs> then we create, of course, our nurseries from scratch. Then we go into the vineyard. And most of the times we make mistakes. So we have to replant again, this plant and replant again. Obviously to do this, I'm not doing it just uh, on the spot. I have my collaboration with my uh, viticulturist, uh, Bartolome. Mm -hmm. uh, we have also analysis, continuous analysis done in Tuscany. Uh, so we, but the progress and uh, uh, is very, very calm in Armenia, very slow. Because as I say, whatever we do, even with Chilar or with Voskehat Garand the Mark, uh, there is no, there is no precedent. So we, we don't know which direction. So everything, and I'm very uh, perfectionist guy as a, <laughs> as a person. Mm -hmm. Uh, so the progress is very slow, but I'm not complaining. That's and, part of the game. And for those of you that, that, that don't know, because uh, Zorik, Zorik is, uh, even though he's Armenian, he uh, grew up in Italy, so that's why the, the Tuscan reference. And yeah, yeah, you're from Sweden, I think? You're Armenian, but you're... My, yeah, my mother's Swedish. My father yes, Armenian. that's right. Uh, I, I want to talk a little bit about building, because... Uh, you guys are on the road full time. We're still following, even though we haven't been to the winery in a few years. See how hard you're working about building a like a basically a brand new brand out of nothing. I mean, you get a big break. I think you were top ten wines in the world in Bloomberg, right, in 2012 or the 2010 or any Karas. Can you talk? Uh, that's a great story. Actually, some people. Can you share how that happened, and then also we can start talking about what it take, what kind of legwork it takes to build a brand. Yeah, I mean, uh, I must say that, of course, that was our uh, first recognition internationally. And uh, it happened because we were in a blogger meeting and Ellen, Ellen McCoy from Bloomberg, which we didn't know her by that time, we did our presentation and we had our wine just out. The wine was just out. Yeah, it was a European wine bloggers. European wine bloggers. Uh, Communities, I can't remember. It's the European wine bloggers. Yeah. Organized by Ryan Opas, which is a fantastic oh, uh -huh. guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and we were participating as with yeah. our wine just out, six with, months. With one wine. With one. <laughs> yes, I remember you tell everybody's got their portfolio, you just have one wine there. <laughs> yeah, we did, yeah. Everybody had like five, six wines. Countries were all sort of represented. And then there's this little one table, Armenia. <laughs> yeah, we got, but that's, uh, Matt, that's the first, uh, of course, it's very important for us. But after that, we got, we have had continuous, continuous recognitions. And we are in a very, um, <laughs> we're very happy to, uh, to have this attention, attention from Masters of Wine journalists and they keep following us and it's giving us more motivation to do on not 120%, do it 140%. So. <laughs> but it's taken a lot of time to, to sort of have these. I mean, for example, I'll tell you a funny story. When we came out with the wine in, in England, we had um, Liberty Wines, uh, it's the first to, to, to distribute our distributor. And uh, David Lee said to us, okay, why don't you enter into the Cantor mm -hmm. Wine Awards? And I was like, okay, sure. And I went into the decanter and it said, okay, country. I was looking Armenia, there was no Armenia. So I thought, okay, um, what am I gonna do? There's no Armenia. So I called up the uh, decanter and I said, okay, I wanna put in a wine from Armenia. And they said, oh no, no, there's no, you know, Armenia. Okay, we'll have to put it, list it in. Okay, so they, they put it in Armenia as a country. And then it said, great variety. Well, RNE, there's no RNE. There's so in the end, I kept calling this lady in the counter and she said, okay, wait, wait, I've got it. You send everything and I'll, and I'll manually put it in. So then after she said, can you give me all great varieties and everything? So I sat there with the counter, you know, and put in all the great varieties, RNE and this and that. So the next year is when people started going in, they actually had Ar Armenia, RNE, Boskev, Garandamak. So it was like way, way at the beginning. 
So. Yeah, but Matt, giving an answer to your uh, question about the recognition, obviously the key here is to have a clear and long-term vision. You have to be meticulous in your job and persistent and believing in what you're doing uh, and uh, ready to have the whatever it takes mentality to arrive to your goals. First and foremost, the wine quality has to be of highest quality uh, because over there, that's the main thing, that's the main issue. Uh, once you are convinced that you have made it and it's pleasing you, then you have to go around the world and spread the word and with the presentation, trips, etc. to not save anything, I mean, uh, not financially, not physically, not uh, Especially, this is the case for Zora, mm -hmm. because being from Armenia, uh, when I started, uh, nobody knew anything about Armenia. Luckily, today, I can say a lot of masters of wine, masters so many years, yeah, little by little, they know. And I think RNE is on the uh, world map already as a high quality grape variety. But we have to keep doing and insisting on the same on the same uh, path I, I i wanted to ask because uh i think actually a lot of uh people that follow us actually are young, uh, young aspiring winemakers brand new brands just starting or even consumers don't realize how much dedication it takes because we see you traveling all around the world i have a i have a random question how much of the production when you're promoting like you do do you actually have to pour how much of production are you actually is Basically, it goes into marketing, marketing for free. Budget, for yeah. free. I mean, uh, no limits, Matt. No limits. Uh, for me, uh, I'm also a proud Armenian. So for me, uh, of course, this is a business. Mm -hmm. But uh, this is a kind of business, I'm sure, whoever is in the wine board and is dedicated, not the uh, gimmick guys or the shortcut guys or the guys who are really dedicated you cannot fix budgets you cannot fix uh, limits and especially Armenia needs a lot of promotion because you have to be present wherever they invite me uh, I can do like three four times flights of seven eight hours in two months time come and forth and back the same destination just to be sure that I'm present in the right moments at the right place. Mm. So no limitations. Uh, what is a whatever it takes mentality, as I said. <laughs> what is the current production size now? We as a winery, we are more or less about 100,000. We are not driving to 100,000. More or less, it depends on the year. We could be 70,000, 90,000, 80,000, but more or less we are there. We are, uh, Sharin, I, I think uh, I've already told you that in my life, uh, quantity has never impressed me. Yeah. If I have 100, you can have 101, yeah. Matt, 100, 200, yeah. and we can go on. Yeah. But the quality, the quality is the key to uh, especially in the wine uh, world, uh, quality is what is impressing me every day I wake up. Because mm -hmm. if I have a better quality, that makes my day more fantastic. Then the next day I change quality, but still good quality. That is the key to success and enjoying the life. I think. What's, uh, I want to shift gears a little bit because you actually have been working very closely with a pretty famous consultant, uh, Alberto Antonini. Can you talk about how you got together with him? What's it like working with uh, somebody? I mean, he's got a lot of this experience and then he comes all the way to Armenia to work with a grape that nobody's heard about. There's probably a lot of interesting stories there. Yeah, no, no. Alberto, Alberto is, a, is a fantastic human being before being a great winemaker. Uh, he's a good friend. We are, we know already, we know, I mean, families are very close to us. So first of all, as a human being, he's a good human being, good father of family, and he's got a fantastic family. As a winemaker, Alberto, I can say he is, um, uh, I, 
his antithesis of uh, the typical winemakers. Because before knowing Alberto, obviously, I've been around, I've seen, even today, I see lots of winemakers. Not all of them, but I can say they all feel superstars. They all have this attitude that I know it all. Uh, this egocentric uh, to show that they know. Uh, Alberto is completely opposite of this, uh, full of knowledge, uh, ready to learn every day because uh, don't forget that when we started, Alberto is for me, contemporary world, there is nobody more than Alberto. But he had the humility uh, to start and understand about RNE, understand about Karasas, and he has been uh, learning, but backing me up with all his knowledge that he has around the world. So he's been an important pillar to, in our project, in Zora's project, but I respect him because uh, he has always respected my tradition, my culture, my country, and he has, he, even today with Chilar, our last invention, uh, he is always there. He is he, not stopping. He's just, uh, I tell you more, I tell you this, then I, uh, person with his knowledge, when he says, this is his word, I am just a tool in your hand. This, you must be a great guy with great confidence to say this, to say, okay, I, I mean, so this is the kind of yeah, person. He, did, he didn't come to Armenia to teach. He came to Armenia to learn, actually. Um, to learn and, and to put his knowledge, you know, uh, to our disposition and say, okay, let's try and do this, let's try and do this, but I don't know, maybe. And he's always been open to talking to the locals, to this. He's, he never came there saying, okay, now I'm going to tell you what to do in this country. So I think, I think. That's the, yeah, that's the key that's issue. Different. And we yeah. do appreciate him. I think Zora's success is also because of this, because of being open-minded. Uh, I read an article by him, uh, <laughs> where you did an interview and you told me a little story when you took, you took a bunch of homemade wines out of a Rennie to when you tried to convince him to come work in Armenia. Oh. <laughs> I, I read an article and he said it was the worst tasting I ever had in my life, but there was enough there to intrigue me. <laughs> Yeah, I, yeah. He, he said, he said, this is the, wor I mean, when, when he tasted old wines, he was like, really, this is absolutely the worst tasting. But he said, if with RNE, if um, the way you treat RNE, the way people treat RNE in Armenia, you can actually get to this quality as bad as it is, it means that there is really great potential. You can feel the potential. So, um, yeah. So it was, it was interesting. Yeah, he's, uh, yeah, we had good times. We have started from uh, scratch with him. And yeah, and uh, still the adventure is young. So yes. we are young. <laughs> yes, uh, let's talk about uh, what you started with was making a wren. You made one wren in the beginning. Uh, we tasted, we've tasted a, a lot of, we had a whole, I think we tasted everything to 2015. Mm -hmm. We missed 16, 17. You just sent us 18. We tasted, which was phenomenal. Uh, then you started white, and now you're starting this new brand. You want to grit the bottle out? We just opened this and tasted it. I wrote my tasting notes right before there we go. Uh, this heritage made out of Chilar. And tell us a story about the, this project here to re revive unique grapes from Armenia. By the way, this is fantastic. I, I this have is, to show it to you too. Yes. So you. <laughs> it's, uh, the label, Your label looks better than yours. You know, it's so, it's so funny. Uh, and, and, you know, all the, all the tasting notes and everything that I read, Everybody says that after the tasting note, beautiful label design. They always say that. Yes. <laughs> With that the that's not my part. You know that. That's uh, <laughs> that's <laughs> next to me talking. Uh, <laughs> so from our manuscript. So very yeah. So this is. I, I'm sure I told you this is the letter Z in Armenian. Yes. Taken from our manuscripts. Being a proud Armenian, I wanted to have also my uh, alphabet. Z for Zora. Yeah. This, to me, 
is really shocking because your first white that you made, Vosky, the Vosky hot and Garden back, uh, just you know, you know, classic white wine. But this you macerated for sixty days. Why did you? I mean, what was the thought process behind everything? Behind everything in this wine, which so is phenomenal, by the way. It's phenomenal. Really, I was blown away by how good it is. Yeah, this is a uh, uh, skin contact. Uh, starting the amphora uh, with the skins around two months of skin contact uh, then it carries on the aging goes around 10 11 months uh, and then we bought them so it's a native variety to Armenia Chilak as Yeras was saying this is one of the varieties that we when we were doing Boski Bos as a wine, we were uh, we didn't know if we were going to work with Boski Hat and Garand Mak. At the start, this was one of the varieties that we worked with, and we kept it aside. Actually, uh, Chilar to make this wine, we have been inside the rows because uh, we didn't have vineyard dedicated to this grape variety oh so you have to kind of pick set him he has to select them in the vineyard exactly yeah. but now we have started to propagate it so uh it's save the game so it's almost extinct i mean it's yeah and uh this is a new project zora heritage project if you notice mm -hmm. also the label is little yeah. bit changed. says heritage yes not right in the middle I think Yeras will be because uh, Yeras will explain that yeah, about the so heritage the, project. So the concept is to bring um, forward a bunch of monovarietal wines that we believe um, give you the potential of Armenia and, uh, and grapes which are almost extinct. They don't necessarily have to be within our region or that we have to plant them. Um, they can be from different regions of Armenia, from north, south, wherever. Um, but we, uh, and so that they can give sort of a roadmap of the different varieties in different regions. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, but obviously we work closely with, uh, with the farmers, with whoever, if, if we decide that it's not something from our vineyard, our plots, then uh, we work very closely with them to understand that, so that they do exactly what we want to do. Those varieties that are uh, part, that are grown in biosource, then we propagate on our vineyards. Those which are not endemic to biosource stay wherever they are. Mm. Um, and in this way, we want to do a whole series of, of the Zora Heritage Project and bring it all under one umbrella to, to sort of, as before with RNE, nobody knew RNE, now RNE is there. We want to say there is Shinar, there is Bosgat, the there's, there's all different kind of varieties. So that's the concept behind it. So basically, after a few years, there will be a collection of Zora Heritage wines, okay. and that will be the presentation of Armenia, the grapes that, in Zora's opinion, they are worthwhile for the wine lovers around the world to have as a taste of Armenia. And they have to be native to Armenia, of course. That's what yeah. the year. How many, do you have any, like what you're experimenting, how many how many uh, different wines are you planning in the future? Do you have another one lined up or another variety? Yeah, I mean, in? we got, uh, Matt, we got lined up. Uh, I mean, this Chilar was supposed to be the second one. Mm -hmm. But uh, in the way, uh, with the one we were going to come out, it was 110%, so we kept it behind. We came out with Chilar. Yeah, the experiments uh, keep uh, going on, but as I as we did with our Zora project, this is Zora Heritage project. As we did with Zora project, nothing is rushed in Zora. Mm. We have adapted fantastically to Biozor rhythm, Biozor climate. <laughs> so everything has to be slow with the, okay. with the best of nature. But the idea would be no limits. It could be I don't know. I cannot give you number. Yeah. But, but it will not be just one, two, because already now we have two is boiling, lots of... Uh, and for example, with this Chilar, we did it in the Alfora because we felt that um, yeah. it, it, was, it, it went well with the Alfora. For mm. example, when we were doing our Boski, we didn't feel, we felt that the Alfora was taking over. It was becoming okay. a wine, it wasn't becoming a wine of the terroir. 
whereas the Chila reacts very, very well with the Alcor. Yeah. And surprisingly, it's very, very clear for... for yeah, yeah, I mean, sure. You know, Shuri and I talked about it because we talked with the universities there, uh, you know, people working in the winemaking school, some of the big guys there in Armenia said that Shilar has a lot of potential, but I nev never tasted one yeah. <laughs> all people the time. talk about it, but nobody made yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> we had never tasted one. So, uh, you want to do some yeah. Q&A, maybe? Yeah, so uh, we have a question here. Sorry, you yeah. were going to say something. Go ahead. I just wanted to make, I mean, nobody can, uh, because we, unfortunately, we are doing it <laughs> uh, remotely. But uh, for me, it was important. Here, uh, Amphora is not the major player. Here, mm -hmm. I, I'm sure you do agree there that the peach, the yeah. apricot, citrus, and the uh, Stone fruits, minerality are the king. This, this is Chilar. This is Chilar talking. For, for me, the, for me the, the wonderful thing, which I highlight in my tasting note, which the, you'll see later, I mean, the, the, wines are the wine's really impressive, is the texture. For yeah. wine, you don't, you, you don't besides the, the actual wine, Yeraz, you have a big untoasted cask, but you have no wood in the, in the winery, which I've been a couple of times, just M4 and cement. But it still has the gritty... Uh, a gritty texture of a wine that you would get in a in a barrel in a great barrel fermented white, especially a great barrel fermented Chardonnay. That gritty texture. Mm -hmm. It's also a little uh, bit spicy as well, smoky on the palate. Yeah. yeah. So I I think I mean I know that I've read a lot of people that have tasted this wine. It's well received, right? You're pretty you're pretty yeah. happy with how this is. Uh, just just it's just out. You are the one of yeah, first sure guys. Uh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> We do have a, 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 actually, we can go back, back and forth, but we do have a couple of questions because for people that don't know, uh, like I just said, you, you only have like, I think it's a 3000 liter cask for, for Yaraz, right? Maybe two of them. Yeah, that's the whole production. That's the only thing that's wood. Uh, besides that, it's just, it's just concrete, uh, kind of big concrete fermenters and Karas and Flora. So somebody has a question actually. Yeah, someone's asking about your, what is the Karas situation like in Armenia? Who is producing it? What is the difference between putting karas on, on, on the ground and buried under the ground? Very nice question. <laughs> <laughs> okay, as I say, when I started uh, karas, nobody was giving importance to uh, karas. I give you a news that Europa Nostra. Yeah, it is the cultural, uh, it's the cultural voice of the European Union. How do you add? has uh, shortlisted Karases, Armenian Karases, mm. as the tradition in verge of extinction. One of the most uh, seven endangered uh, cultural traditions. I see. So uh, we hope this brings more attention towards our Karases. Yeah. Our Karases are a uh, uh, heritage that uh, I don't expect all Armenia to age in Karases, but every time a winemaker starts to age in the Karases, gives me only happiness because I think that is, that is one of the uniqueness of Armenia's uh, winemaking and wine uh, potential. Mm -hmm. uh, in Armenia now, uh, the guys we know, uh, the Trinity is making it, uh, in the Vaz, Vaz. Few, Vaz, of course, yeah, Voskervas, uh, they have taken this direction. Um, yeah, one or two are coming, they're calling us yeah. and saying, how do you do it? So, so hopefully, you know, some people will do it. Mm -hmm. and as, as for the condition, there's, um, there's one or two uh, elderly people who are making them, but it's, it's very difficult. Um, they're not consistent. Uh, they make it and then they sell it off to somebody else, or they make it and then they break it, or they make it and they don't have somewhere to fire it. Um, so uh, yeah, it's it's, an, it's going extinct to be honest with you. Unless, unless yeah, Matt, it's uh, yeah, it's uh, so many years uh, we are fighting in this direction. I'm sure I told you. I don't know yeah. if I told you or not. We have also founded the uh, foundation. We made mm -hmm. the foundation. Yeah. Uh, which is Gara's project, uh, what, where we are going to revitalize the art of making amphoras. The craftsmanship of amphoras has to come back to Armenia. That's our next project. 
And we are already in collaboration since so many years uh, with our Italian friends. Uh, and, and I think we've understood that we have to uh, work on the very young and start teaching them yeah. from the very young because you can't rely on, on, on the older generations. Got it. Um, they, 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 don't, they don't take the thing seriously. So uh, we have to sort of start from very young and from people, young people who are interested in pottery Got and they teach them from, from zero. I think. So it's, that's again a very long term project. We have the, uh, another, the person asked kind of a, a winemaking question about the Karas. The, also, uh, for, pe for people that don't know, they are very different than uh, the Georgian Quavery because material is different. The Georgian Quavery, they line them with beans wax and, are, and the Karas are not. They have like, they, the, the material is completely different because your soils are different when you make them with. But the person wanted to know, have you noticed the difference between fermenting wines with Karas that are not buried versus buried Karas? Yeah, it is uh, obviously if you don't bury the caras, the micro oxygenation is faster. Uh, you don't have the stability of the temperature because they are outside. Uh, on the other hand, if you have totally inside, you have the temperature control, of course, because they are totally inside, uh, but you lose the inspection. Because once you bury them, you don't know what's happening till you take them out. That's why my forefathers were up there 3,000 years ago. If you go to, uh, uh, if you look at the photos of uh, Army Blur, uh, and that's the technique, Zora is convinced that that's the uh, right way. Uh, my forefathers, 3,000 years ago, they were already, they took the best of all the worlds. With three quarter inside, you got the temperature stability. With one quarter outside, you got the temperature difference, so you create movement in the mm -hmm. amphora. And then you got the inspection. So you got the best of all worlds. After 20 years of uh, dealing with garasses, I think that's, that's the future, at least for Zora. And, and I think it's important to say that, um, as in every country, you know, uh, the traditions of garas winemaking, the technologies of garas winemaking in Armenia are completely different to those of Georgians, as to those of Portuguese. As to, so a lot of people just say, oh yeah, okay, so it just, but no, there's, a, there's a fundamental differences. So the shape of the garasses are also different. The techniques are different. Um, so so it, it, it's, it, yes, it's uh, making in clay, uh, clay pots, but it is a complete different technology to uh, the neighboring countries or to any or like the Tinajas or the Italia. Yeah. So, you know, we've got our own tradition, which is very, very important to, to preserve because otherwise, once we lose that, you know, it's gone. So. We, we have another question here about uh, our Reni. Somebody hasn't tasted our Reni before. How would you describe what it tastes like or or the kind of wine that it makes? Uh, first advice, to go and buy <laughs> right away. And not any. <laughs> right away, Azor Karasi, yes. <laughs> okay, uh, uh, r and &E, I think you will agree with me, is about red and black fruits, uh, spices. For me also, mountain herbs, <laughs> of Vajotzor. Uh, my RNA is because it's high altitude, the acidity is there, so it's very food friendly. And uh, I'm talking about Zora Karasi, uh, it's a balanced wine uh, made for a uh, long time to, uh, to stay. I mean, the ageability is very good with Zora Karasi. Are you able to compare Arani Noir to a more famous international grape variety in terms of how it tastes? Uh, I don't like comparison because uh, uh, RNE has got his uh, specific place, specified place in the wine world, and uh, I must say also I. Uh, I must also make this clear because I hear in Armenia. There are people who are mixing RNE because it's my fault. I called it RNE Noir. They are mixing it with Pinot Noir. Huh. 
RME Noir doesn't have, this is, uh, this is not my work, this is uh, Neuchâtel University has done with Jose Villamo, they have yeah. done the DNA profile of RNA. RNA doesn't belong to any, I mean, RNA is 100% native to Armenia. It's DNA, it's not near to any other writer. And as a uh, grape, is so old that Jose himself, he calls it an orphan grape. So they don't know who the uh, parents are. Mm -hmm. So there is no international relation. We are so lucky to have RNA in our biotour. Uh, I must just do a, do a small uh, uh, cycle. Uh, Vyodzor lately is very pleasing. Eh? Vyodzor lately has huge uh, uh, reflectors. reflectors on it. And uh, there are people coming to invest in Vyodzor. Hey. If any of these guys are seeing this uh, message, please respect Vyodzor because Vyodzor is not only the quintessential uh, grape growing region in Armenia. Uh, Biozor internationally, worldwide, can be a fantastic, can be a unique uh, appellation that we don't have stick for RNA. Yeah. Uh, you've been around the world, and I, it doesn't come to my mind any other appellation so small, having so much history, having this altitude. Mm -hmm. Being a phylloxera free land and uh, with lots of uh, grape varieties, a specific traditional aging method in a small place like Biozor. Please, whoever comes in is more than welcome, but do not bring the grafting to Biozor. Mm -hmm. We have yeah. to respect because I know business wise doesn't make sense because the uh, the investor wants to have, but whoever comes to Vyotzor has to understand he's entering in a sanctuary. This is one of the very few places in the world that is phylloxera free, and on top of that has got all the surroundings that I said in one small place. If you are worried about your money not be uh, paid back or uh, one day phylloxera will come, Armenia is, has got other fantastic regions. Go to Artsakh, fantastic place. Philoxera is already there. Go there <laughs> with your international varieties, do the grafting, whatever you want to do, or even with native varieties, do the grafting over there, or go to Tavush, another fantastic region. They need, if you want, if you enter in uh, Bayotzor, uh, Remember that uh, we have inherited a unique uh, terroir. It's our duty to pass it to our next generation. We are nobody to bring grafting in Vyotzor because no matter who, what they say, in the grafting in a uh, phylloxera free land, there is always a possibility yeah. of transmitting the disease, no, no matter how laboratories say, but there is the possibility. This was for my region, I had to say, sorry. Well, I, I, and I'm, I'm not joking, I, Shireen, we, we talk all the time, we talk, tell people about it, it's an amazing place when you're in the Ararat Valley, then you climb up the plateau, mm -hmm. and uh, Vazgazor is kind of like land before time, lost yeah. in time. You have all these hidden vineyards on other small plateaus. You have the high mountains. It's really a magical place. It's really untapped. There's, I mean, there's one hotel at the far end. Uh, there's, <laughs> there's a couple small restaurants on on the river there, but incredible place. Right? I, call I, call it, a different world. I call it the Garden of Eden of viticulture. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it does look like that. Very old varieties um, that a lot of people don't know. These are all very, very old ancient varieties. If we lose these, if phylloxera comes, once we lose these, we lose this for, for humanity. We don't lose it only for Armenia. So. And RNA has been there for millennia. Uh, I give you another database for Vyotzor. You've been to Armenia, you know that Vyotzor is the highest elevation cultivation of grape in Armenia. 
and this is also in northern hemisphere we we are one of the highest if not the highest being the highest altitude in armenia not only zora all vayotzor nobody covers the crop during winter Mm -hmm. There are lower elevations in Armenia. Most of the places, winter time, they are obliged, even if they work with native varieties of Armenia, they are obliged to cover them because if not, they lost the crop. Vyotzor is so fantastic, being 400, 600 meters above that uh, level, nobody in Vyotzor. That means our grape varieties have adapted fantastically to our microclimate. Please do not ruin it with drafting. <laughs> <laughs> we'll put we'll put a banner. Yeah, we'll put a bit of there. So I have. Uh, I think. We'll, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, 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 go ahead. Uh, we have we have. Well, I think one more question here because this could be a, a big topic. Is um, this actually? And actually, you probably you, you're in Milan currently, right? That's where you live. You live yeah, in Milan um, half yeah. and half the year in in, in Armenia. How is uh, how is this current situation around the world affecting? Uh, wine business just in general, especially for a, a small boutique winery? Uh, we will take our uh, hit. Uh, till now, uh, we haven't felt it, but I think in future we will have our share of uh, challenges. Mm -hmm. uh, we are not alone. I mean, all the world is suffering. Uh, what I can do from my side, just stay positive, try to create new situations that can uh, bring the uh, damage at a more acceptable level. But we are ready, yeah. We know that small wineries, especially small wineries, uh, are going to take the worst hit. Uh, that's why you have to keep uh, drinking Zora. Yes. <laughs> uh, also, a question about the progress of Armenian wine industry. What do you think? Do you think that the current growth rate is healthy for Armenian wine, or is there something that you would do differently to help the entire wine industry pushes um, itself forward for you as an Armenian person? Uh, if I understood right, you're asking if Armenia is moving in the right direction. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, no, Armenia is doing fantastically. Le late last uh, seven, eight years, there has been a change in the in Armenia, and uh, for, I mean, now we are locked down in Milano. But every time I go to Armenia, there are new wines, new uh, scenarios coming out, which is more than pleasing. Uh, as I say, we have to understand Armenia is a small quantity wise as a land we are a small landlocked country i think the future of armenia is towards high quality we have to come out with high quality wines we shouldn't do wine just for sake of doing wine it's not wine making for sake of doing wine making doesn't take armenia anywhere an okay wine from Armenia doesn't take Armenia anywhere. We are so small, we don't have the luxury to make okay wines or just... Uh, we have to focus to come out. Armenia is supposed to be on a high segment on the world map. I am not a fundamentalist. I understand that the country cannot do only high quality wines. There are other players in there and that's good, that's healthy. But as a uh, aim, as a target, Armenia is a winner if the liquid, if the wine is right, because we got it all in Armenia. Not only Vyotzor, also other regions of Armenia. They have so many things to say to the world, to the wine lovers of the world, that uh, it's enough for three, four generations to come. But we have to play it right, no shortcuts no gimmicks we have to work for our liquid the wine has to be at high quality then and, spread and the we work. have to understand that it's a long-term project there's no you know as you said no shortcuts whoever goes into it they have to see the long long view if they really want to bring up our game 
Great. Well, answer your question, very positive. Armenia <laughs> is doing very well. Very good well. to hear. That's great to hear. Shereen, we're longing to go back. I'm sure you are too, as soon as all this stuff clears up. Uh, we're awaiting you there. Yes, 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 yes. We, uh, we got to make it. We actually were planning maybe this year, but uh, with everything, well, everything's going. Uh, Who knows? Yes, you better come run the marathon. Yes, I know. <laughs> I'm still waiting. I want to go. <laughs> we're pushing our time, so I'm going to uh, sign off, guys. Answer. Uh, just leave any more questions, everything in, in description. I'll try to answer them or I'll tag uh, Zor Kadiras and Zor Wines. They can maybe help you out too. Uh, you stay on for just one second before I sign off. I'll say goodbye to, <laughs> say goodbye to you properly, guys. If you like the video, you make sure to follow our Facebook page, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Exotic Wine Travel. Drink some Zora wines because I mean, they're world, world class. I, mm -hmm. take, I take them with me uh, a lot. We, took, we actually took them to a couple of sommelier tastings in New Jersey and New York City last couple of years ago. So uh, guys, enjoy, and we'll see you at the next episode. Cheers. 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 Cheers.